Hi, this demo is about the Splon Nitro amplifier. I'll do some demo clips in uh, a couple different styles that maybe the amp is known for and what it also isn't known for. I'm playing with a backing track or just music to give it some context. So once the context sits, then I'll solo the guitars so you can just hear the guitars. I'll share my thoughts near the end of the video and if you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. Love to hear what you think. If you hated the video, video was stupid. Demo sounded good. Demo sounded bad. Demo was worthless. I don't care. Uh, any feedback is really welcome. So I'd like to thank you for sharing your precious time watching this video. And I hope you find it helpful and at least a little bit entertaining. Thank you.
my thoughts. Number one, it's, it's a really fun and cool amplifier. The first impressions of it were, boy, this thing has a lot of gain, and boy, does it have a ton of low end. But if you fool around with it a little bit, um, you can get a lot. You can get a lot more sounds out of it than you might think. This speaker cabinet over here has V30s and uh, um, G12H30s, and it pairs up well with this amp, where it doesn't pair up as well with, say, a, a quick rod, which I also have. Um, it's not as fast as the quick rod, which is kind of funny named on the quick rod. Quick rod is so fast, such an aggressive attack. Um, it's a great amplifier. The nitro is, uh, it's, it's smoother and uh, less of that attack. Obviously the low, more low end, but you can, you can dial that back. It's no problem. You can dial in, dial in as much treble as you want, but it doesn't have that quick rod attack. But I'm not saying that's a bad thing either. For instance, in like that Splon or the Splon demo, in the little Strat solo demo, that kind of creamy distortion that was with a gain about a little bit less than nine o'clock. Uh, there's no way you could get that sound with a quick rod. So th they're two different things. The mid range sits a little lower, um, but anyway, it's it's really cool. Let's see that. Um, talk about some of the controls on the amp from left to right or the least left here. There's resonance and presence, uh, but if you look at it from the input jack and how it reads there, these first four are the clean channel. Um, so it's like gain for the clean channel, master, treble, and bass. So bass, treble, master, um, input gain on the, on the clean channel. If you're looking at it from this side, you got the global resonance and presence, then it just reads bass, middle, treble. So even though with this control layout that I chose, it's the same on my quick ride, by the way, you can't you can't read the, the knobs and you can't see what the controls are. That's really kind of easy to, to grasp. So the first four channels, the clean channel. Um, if you come straight down from the end, there it's the gain, then the master for the for the lead channel. Solo boost is here, and then we're on to the EQ section here. So you can look at the amp in a second and even though you can't read anything or see where the dials are set, it's really easy to set. And I actually kind of like that in that you're not you're not necessarily set setting something with your eyes. You just move the knob, and it's easy to figure out which knob is which. Um, you can get them in different layouts. So I went with this gold panel, and the, I don't know, it's kind of like an 800 look. They also saw them in like a black panel with white lettering and chicken head knobs and it's easy to, to see what's what but it's still really easy straight down from the ends gain come down from the a that's your solo volume uh it's surprisingly easy so anyway that's that uh the clean channel uh i the clean channel in my quick rod the quick rods from about 2006 that's it's really like an afterthought is bass middle trouble and volume and it's like just a really sterile cold Nothing going on sound. If you need it for a pinch, it'll sort of get you by. But basically with that amp, you're just, you're just playing the one channel of the amp all the time. Uh, one thing you can do that's really helpful with that amp is, and, and this amp too, uh, just turn on the solo boost and then turn down your volume and it, you get a better clean sound than if you just roll down your volume. It, that, that's really an effective feature. So this has it, the quick rod has it. Um, anyway, so when I first tried the clean channel on this amp, I was like, holy cow, this thing sounds fantastic. So I was really quite surprised to, to see that in this amp. Um, if I look back to the quick rod, there's a couple things. So the quick rod 2006, whatever, say it's 15 years old now. And prior to that, I had spent quite a bit of time with a spawn modded 1959 Marshall um, with KT88. So that, that thing was a bomb. That's actually how that one got away. Um, but I, I tried to buy it from my friend, but he had already sold it. So that was how I originally went with the quick rod, and that works great. Um, so, but maybe I can show some of the different or explain some of the differences between the nitro and the quick rod as I see them, at least from my old quick rod. So, number one, that clean channel and the quick rod. 
Uh, it's not very, it's not very good at all. This one's great. I wonder if the quick rod has been upgraded over the years to use like the new clean channel in this amp. Because if it has, that would that would be fantastic. Um, the quick rod. So you're in gear two, gain halfway, and you have to get the master up to say nine o'clock before the the low end fills in and that amp. Otherwise, it's really thin and harsh. Um, no real qualm to that, except at that volume, it is smoking loud. So you got to be playing in a loud band. It's, it's not it's not a bedroom amp in any any way at all. In contrast, this amp has a couple things. I think that's a pre. I don't know this for sure, but it seems like that's a, a pre-phase uh, master control. Like it just the amp just like isn't working at all until that thing picks up. This one is really, really smooth, and it, um, it's, so it's probably a post-phase master volume, but it's pretty, pretty linear as you go from real low, or at least moderately low, to, say, drummer volume, but which is still, like, quite a bit lower than, than where the quick rod needs to be to sound right. Um, but it also has another trick up its sleeve. And the effects loop, it has a bypass switch and a minus 4 plus 10, minus 10 plus 4 switch. Uh, I messed around with it a bit in the plus 4 setting. So the trick in the, in the loop is there's another volume knob back, back there. Um, and so say you get your sound and it's a little bit too loud. Say Or even say you get your sound at drummer band volume and then you're playing in a situation where you need to be a lot quieter. You can engage that loop, put a jumper switch in the center return jack, and then just turn on the volume there. And that's really effective. I was really surprised how well the master works, number one, but then how well that, that second feature for lowering the amp volume uh, works. I also tried the amp with a few few different uh, pedals, uh, um, a Strymon delay, uh, some, some other delay, maybe a DD3 boss. And I tried it with a boss chorus. I thought they all worked flawlessly. I only had the chords running about a foot to the top of the amp. But I was really impressed with how the effect loop worked there. And one of the reasons I wanted to mention that was the effect loop on the quick rod, which is back... Oh boy, how do you do this? Back there. That, uh... Once you engage the, the loop at all, even with the cable, there's something that just dropped out of the amp. It, like all the wonderful character just sort of disappeared. So when it, when I used that amp, and I used it for a long time, I, I never used the loop. And I was always using loops with like, say, a TC Electronic G Major, and I'd split it out to another, to another cabinet. And that didn't work at all with this amplifier. So what I wound up doing was I'd take my G Major in a, in a rack, and uh, a Motu audio interface, like an old one, it had a couple mic pre's in it and a built-in little digital mixer, one one unit rack space thing. I would mic the cab, and I would run that into the interface, and then out of the interface, I'd run that into the the effect unit um, coming out stereo. So basically, what I and I run that all all wet. So basically, I had a wet wet dry wet rig and that was super effective so really the rack was a little bit bigger than that i played in this rush band and had some synthesizer module in there i'd use for all the the synthesizer stuff so there was that in the rack there was a the, the four unit one rack space four unit di unit so that would also plug into that mode too as well and through the di i could send it to the, to the front of house my synthesizer and stereo as well as the TC Electronic unit and serial, and then they would just mic up the amp like normal. And one of the reasons that works so well is because that quick rod is so punchy and so articulate it, that it almost needs a, like a pillow around the sound. So when you surround it with a little bit of chorus or a, some delay, that amp really shines and sounds like a monster in that setup. If, if the amp isn't as aggressive as that, I think it takes away a little bit of, of that sound. Um, 
or what's cool about that song because so i've tried it obviously i i did it on the little, little strat thing i did basically the same thing the the mic sound is coming through the board but anyway so i used to use those di to the front of the house if i uh if I was too lazy to bring a couple powered monitors, I'd just have them run that signal back through my floor monitors. But if I really wanted it to sound cool, I had a couple powered monitors in each side that I could control the volume with the, with the Motu. And that was also my synthesizer monitor. So I guess in summary, going to the quick rod. Oh, so, so looking at these improvements he's made to the amp, I think people said, I want more low end. Well, it's got more low end, trust me. The resonance control plus the bass, it's it's just voiced to have a bigger low end than the quick rod. I want more gain? Check. The thing's got more gain than you'll ever ever even think about using, I think. And uh people probably complained about the, the clean channel. He came up with a, a wonderful sound and clean channel. Uh can't say enough about it. Especially with something like a, a Les Paul sounds great but if you just plug in the strat it still sounds great too without messing with the controls can't say enough about that um probably other people complained about the amp is just too loud and that's fine so i think he came up with ways to to deal with that too like master works a lot better that little trick with the loop in the back works extremely well all in all, I, I think it's a really cool evolution of, of, if it is an evolution, it's not just a, it's got to be an evolution. He learns tricks and listens to what people say. I, I, I think he's done a really good job with this stuff. Um, I'd also like to say if, if somebody ever gets a chance to hear one of those spawn modded marshals with the KT-88s, go check it out. They sound unbelievable. And yeah, they're unbelievably loud too. So keep that in mind, but goes with the territory sometimes but anyway this amp i think it's a great sound and amp and uh there's a longer story to how i wound up with one but anyway that's a story for another day or not anyway thank you very oh uh in case you're wondering about this guitar used in the video that that winger song i uh it always kind of intrigued me when i'd hear it it sound would sound like it sounds like the song just keeps shifting gears and you know, as it's modulating, it kind of gets heavier. And uh, I just, it just, I just thought it was interesting and really unique. So by the, it's in drop C sharp, you know, like, you know, drop D, but I tuned down a half step and drop D. And uh, so I, I never use this guitar. It's, it was made by, as, as I understand it, uh, Luthier from Taylor was making some guitars and whatever this wood is is a wood that what that Taylor uses it's really pretty but uh, I have any fingerboard 6100 frets real flat radius I don't care for that part it's really why I don't play it it sounds very much like a Les Paul without the super focused mid-range of a Les Paul low end's about the same high end's about the same not as much mid-range um, I also really don't like where the switch is I can't I like to switch pickups a lot and I can't I can't get to this damn thing. Um, anyway, so so there's that. But it's a pretty cool guitar. Anyway, I grabbed it for that song because I needed to tune down the guitar and uh, I just said, oh, well, we'll tune down this one and see how it works. And it worked pretty well. Also with that tune, I didn't know, I'm really rambling now. I, I, I sort of knew how to play it a little bit just playing around when I'd hear it. Uh, but I didn't really know it. So I spent about an hour in another room using a uh, UA Apollo headphones trying to learn the song. And uh, Freeman B plug-in, it's something I practice on all the time. Super quiet, super quiet in the headphones. And it's just really a, a, an easy way to learn songs. You can play real quiet, get the volumes exactly right. You can hear what's going on. So anyway, after about an hour, I'm like, okay, I got this tuned down. So then I came down here and I'm starting to dial in a sound I'm, and I'm like, I kind of got the sound together, but I can't play the song at all. I knew where to put my hands everywhere, but everything I was doing with my right hand uh, was just completely screwed up. And the song, it sounded like I never played the, the, the song before. So it took me about 20 times looping through the, the part of the song I did to where I felt like, I knew how to control the 
the guitar and the amp um, and how I picked and all, and all that stuff to, to get the sound I was looking for. Like sometimes it's got a, a bright chunk chunk to it and sometimes it's got this really smooth element where you're basically when you hit something you're, you're partially muting the strings or you're, you're muting them at the middle to where it takes all the high end off or you know sometimes you're picking kind of straight which is a truer sound and sometimes you're sideways and it's a little more quacky it's got that scratchy thing to it or sometimes you might you know, be doing like the partial harmonic thing to get more to get more bite out of something. Anyway, it took me at least twenty times before I could play play the amp. Another damn ass long story, but the point being, those plug-in type things are so forgiving. You can't. It's almost like you can't learn how to play the instrument with them. You can learn. You can learn where to put your fingers. But you can't learn how to get the sound out of the instrument with one of those things because they're just so forgiving. Um, which also says, you know, the amplifiers are kind of like an instrument. They uh, they are an instrument. So anyway, it's like the uh, the amps are really very much instruments under themselves, and you have to learn how to play them. You can also say, okay, what's the difference from amp A to amp B, like? Uh, and you could say, okay, well, you got a Strat and a Les Paul. You know, I wouldn't necessarily call the Quick Rod and the Nitro a Strat or a Les Paul, but they are at least that much different in in a, how they are, other than their guitars and like they have this sort of martially sound. So I think that's why I wind up with so many other other amps and people do. They're they're like more unique to the whole sound of everything that's going on than. Than a guitar, uh, yeah, guitars have a sound, but like amplifiers, that's like everything. So anyway, so it's, it's a cool amp. Hope you like the video. If you're still here, Jesus, the wheezes, praise your soul. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll leave you with one more. Hopefully, I edit that out a little. Leave you with one more. That's uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do the video. Uh, that old Santana tune from 1972, uh, this amp, especially in the room, was like, holy cow, does that sound a lot like that? And I don't think you would expect that from what you'd be thinking of as a fire-breathing, you know, Marshall modded amp or whatever. Uh, but it, it totally does that. that. That was done with the gain down real low, like below 9 or around 9 probably. And then also playing a lot of that with the guitar volume turned down. And I got closer on that, on that sound with the Stratocaster versus, say, a Les Paul. And I think in part two, on that record, I think Neil Sean was playing a Strat and uh, Carlos was playing a P90 SG. So it fit more into that. And then the other thing that's kind of known about that is you used to play two Thunder Twins on you know, full blast, and then control his tone with his hands, the guitar controls. Um, he, he got a wonderful sound there. But anyway, so no Fender Twin, but I got I got in the relative ballpark, I thought. Um, by the way, no pedals, no, no pedals on the video. Uh, it's all straight in. I corded it into this, except for the, this end song, which is coming up, which was recorded with a couple of mics. I just threw up and Mixed up, blended them, and called it a day. Uh, I forgot to mention the foot switch. So the foot switch comes with a 25 foot uh, 5 pin din, din cord. It's got clean or distorted channel. Um, they call this the mode switch, and, and what that, I didn't use it, but what it does is that real thick, mm, low midi sound that's kind of inherent to the amplifier it feels like it pulls it back a little so basically if you're playing in the gain channel and you need to clean it up and you turn down your volume and you need to clean it up a little more turn on the sound i'll do it do it again so it, it kind of uh it kind of makes the high stand out by by i think reducing the mids through the through the preamp so there's that od1 od2 od1 default od2 i, I showed on the one santana tune 
Um, it's a, it's kind of like OD1, OD2 switch on the, on the quick rod. It adds a little uh, mid-range power through, through the signal. So like on the quick rod, if you're doing a solo and you just want, a, it's like a little more gain and a little more pokiness. It's not really pokey. It's almost, it's almost like you don't notice, but you hit that switch and then all of a sudden it's kind of like effortless feedback out of the guitar, which is really cool. And the last one is the uh, the solo boost, which en engages the second. See, I knew right where the knob was, and I can't see it at all. Um, the second master volume. The second master volume isn't completely independent. It's somehow tied into the, the first one. Um, so it's almost like if you set them the same, it gets a little louder. Anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye.